Hello there. It's nice to see you again. This is a little time that we get together to talk about our story. The story matters. Your story matters. Our story matters. Your story matters. And we have a special guest today, and she's going to tell us about her story and the story of some, some of the great things that are happening in Middlebury in this area. So, Renee or Sibby uh, is our guest, and we're going to let her begin her process. Hi. Uh, so for those of you who don't recognize me, I am Renee Orsitti, Programming Librarian at Ilsley Public Library here in Middlebury. Thanks for having me on, Len. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, so you were here to talk about the memory cafes that sure, I'm doing. Sure, let's do that. Yeah, great. So uh, back in January, I got together with the um, Vermont chapter of the Alzheimer's Association, National mm -hmm. Alzheimer's Association because we have a local <coughs> celebrity here in East Middlebury, mm -hmm. a woman named Pamela, and she was diagnosed with early onset dementia. Mm -hmm. And she, after mm, years of trying to figure out a diagnosis and finding her purpose, came to the conclusion that her job was to, while she still was um, able to communicate and remember, and sort of have <coughs> a foot in both camps, a foot in people who with dementia and a foot I in people who still have all of their memory abilities mm -hmm. to advocate and advertise. And um, so she made a film with the national, um, the local chapter of the Alzheimer's Association and we premiered it at the library in January. It's called Living with Dementia. And it's a lovely film. If anybody's interested in seeing it, you can find it in the um, Vermont National Alzheimer's website. And in this film, Pamela really talks about what it is like to go through not just the world, specifically <coughs> our community, the Middlebury community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with dementia and the struggles and the trials and what's really hard to navigate. There's some joy in there too, but it's really eye opening on how um, mm -hmm. difficult it is for folks like this. And so she, um, we premiered this film, and the film is created in such a way so that there are uh, three or four planned discussion stops. So you watch the film for a little while, and then you have a pause, and then the audience has discussion. Mm -hmm. We had such a lovely event. Pamela was there in person. We okay. showed the film. We had about 80 people either mm -hmm. afflicted with dementia or memory issues mm -hmm. and or their caregivers and also stakeholders in the community attend this program. And then after that we had a little panel discussion uh, discussing just resources mm -hmm. and different things in the community. And so that was one piece of a bigger project that I have been part of, um, which is to try to get Middlebury declared a dementia friendly community mm -hmm. through the Dementia Friendly America National Association. So, so that's so where we started. Both of those mm -hmm. uh, are really fascinating parts of the story yes. or the story themselves. So uh, say say a little bit more about uh, the getting the, the, this recognition. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll come back to w what you learned what? by have or having people face to face. Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's try that. So I started, I was invited to, you know those meetings that you have where mm -hmm. half the world is invited <coughs> and there's all kinds of things going on and you oh, show yeah. up and you're not really sure how you fit into this puzzle, but it sounds like a good idea, so you go. So that was great. It was over at Eastview. Mm -hmm. um, and the people over there had written a Walter Surf grant to sort of kick off the initiative mm -hmm. to get Middlebury certified as dementia free are friendly, excuse me, and they're all, we're also working with um, a class of students at Middlebury College. So we had a, whole, a big meeting with all of the stakeholders and we had so much wonderful enthusiasm and buy-in. And at that meeting, uh, a couple of people said, oh gosh, we'd really love to have memory cafes, but we don't have any place to hold them. And I said, well, I've always wanted to have a memory cafe. I've got the space, but I don't have the skill. So that was the first step toward the library's part in all of this. Okay. 
So um, then in the meantime, we, you know, as those big meetings go, you sort of narrow down your focus. And so right now that um, smaller committee of folks, myself included, we're focusing our efforts on um, getting this memory cafe at the library up and running and well attended. And then we're also looking for um, to put out a publication of local resources specific mm -hmm. to memory issue problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're talking about excitement, but let me ask you uh, whether you also experience people who are resisting. Yes. And, and we, let's talk a little bit about why are, are they resisting? Um, I, I, you know, say a little bit more about that if you can. Well, at the big uh, original kickoff <coughs> meeting we had, um, it was interesting to hear from different people who are experiencing the affliction from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of caregivers who expressed, you know, it's it's a big job to take care of somebody who has memory issues. Mm -hmm. And um, that person is struggling with accepting so much loss and grief. And it's really hard. And so I, I felt a lot of discouragement in the way of, well, I've been doing this forever. How can you help? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, so that, and so the response is, I don't know. I don't know how I can help, but my goal is to give you an opportunity to create community mm -hmm. with folks who, who, if I can't help you personally, maybe they can. Yeah. So um, I, that was the sort of resistance that Care I heard. Caregiving can be very demanding. Uh, it's, yeah. it's just heartbreaking to, to watch people suffer and, and work so hard for somebody that they love and feel so mm -hmm. unappreciated and frustrated. It's very sad. And, and it's daily. Uh, daily. You don't daily. ever get a break. No. And no. I mean, and even if you have respite, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and Pamela, the star of our film, she's afflicted with early onset, and she's the main caregiver for her mother who has dementia. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know what sort of assistance she has, if any. Uh, I didn't speak to her about that specifically, right. but I mean, right. that's a lot. Is that, uh, what's in the long projected plan uh, of, of providing relief is for people, caregivers, is that part of the plan? So because of what I am, the library, the uh, type of organization we are, I am not really set up to provide respite for the caregivers. Right. What I'm able to provide and what I have kicked off is called the Bright Day Memory Cafe, and it's an hour and a half. It's the third Wednesday of each month, and you, the a person with the memory issue and their caregiver, whoever that may be, maybe mm. it's not their regular caregiver, maybe this is a respite, come together, and I will offer um, different programming, you know, I've mm -hmm. got some kind of thematic for next month, uh, Valentine's Day love thematic stuff. Okay. Mostly an opportunity to socialize, but also some structured, organized, maybe conversation or an activity, a lot of games, mm -hmm. things, so that it's not exactly a respite for the caregiver and that they can walk away, but you're within a community, you're not alone your person that you're taking care of is engaged over here with the craft and perhaps I'm running the craft so you get to be off for a few minutes right. while that's happening. And someone there might have a sense of humor yes. uh, that would uh, also create a, a sense of relief. Absolutely. I, 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 it's really hard to have a sense of humor when it's one on one, you know. Yes, because I mean, you don't know if you're upsetting somebody that's right. or offending them. Uh, and, yes. And and, and uh, so it's so the more the people you have, yeah, the, the excitement. Well, and they can set the tone, right? Right. Right. So if I come in and I have some silly game, uh, and everybody just decides we're going to have fun with this, then yeah, we're going to have fun with that. Okay. So, and I definitely know how to laugh. I'm very good at it. Uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> what what would would draw you to say this is the kind of 
project, if you had mm. th another choice and yeah. this choice, yeah, yeah. It, it would say, this is the choice I want to take. So right. what, what, would, what, what draws you? So um, a couple of things. I mostly try to think about things that are going to help the people with the memory mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. access memories, mm -hmm. right? So for example, your era, if I were going to do music, I'm not going to pick Taylor Swift for you, although maybe no. you're a Swifty. <laughs> Um, I might pick Frank Sinatra instead. So I sort of think about that. I think about the audience and, mm -hmm. and if I'm trying to um, open them up and get them to engage in some conversation, I need to pick something that they're right. familiar with. Right. And then the crafts, you know, I don't know, I like to do crafts, I like to do activities. And so probably uh, time, you know, how long it's going to take, how messy is it, how easy is it. I also don't like to do th make something just for the sake of making it. I like to be have it serve a purpose at the end too. So, so I think so about that. So it goes something that you can take with you and uh, sit on the use it for something table or yeah. Yeah. you remember. Or give it to somebody. Or maybe you remember. Maybe you remember. Or you uh, yeah. I might not, but you yeah. probably would. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm I am one who has this concern about memory. I remember uh, the first time I, I'm, I'm a public speaker mm. and I've been used to talking all my life and one day I suddenly came to a place and I, there's a black, a black hole right there mm. and I, I thought I don't have a word for, <laughs> where's my word? I can't right. find my word. Right. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I struggle with this. Well, you mm -hmm. should come then to I my will next come. memory cafe. I will come. Now, you were asking about activities. So one of the love-themed activities I have for the February event is I made a slideshow where I have pictures of um, Hollywood power couples from mm -hmm. the 50s and <coughs> the 60s and we'll flash them up there and we'll see if people can name them. Oh, and I have lists of clues, okay. so if people don't recognize them immediately, I can start throwing yeah. out clues until they get to them. Yeah. So that's just fun. And okay. then that will spark a conversation about, you know, your favorite Hepburn and Tracy movie or, mm -hmm. you know, how many movies did Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward do together, really. Right. That sort of stuff. Right. So then we'll just jump so off from there. So you, you draw upon those resources from where? Uh, your, in your head? or Sometimes in my head. I've got a couple of um, websites that are have suggestions for right. activities for this particular population. Yeah. I ask people once I get a p program established and I have folks that are coming, what do you want? I want this to be your um, Mm -hmm. program you know I'm here to facilitate you creating the community that you want it to be so what does this look like to you what would you like me mm -hmm. to provide mm -hmm. and then I'll facilitate what they hope for okay so uh, w once once a month once a month third Wednesdays do you from 10 30 till noon I from believe 10 30 to noon 10 to 11 30 scratch that 10 to 11 30 10 to 11 30 mm. okay and you anticipate doing other things as well? Sure, sure. I always will have coffee and tea and bottled water. We might uh, watch a TED Talk together and then, and then engage in discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We might have a craft. We might have a guest speaker. I'm working on getting um, some drumming coming. And sure. We'll bring extra drums, so we'll do a little bit of drum classing. That's, that's good. Um, learning, I mean, and uh, I might have some somebody who's willing to come and do chair yoga once in a while. So just a real variety of things. So did I, did I hear you say that there's kind of two groups here? Uh, uh, one is the, are the volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, and the other is an, an organization so I'm working pretty closely with a bunch of stakeholders organization right. wide. And so those two groups that you're talking about are overlapping. Okay. And so some of those people are coming in on their own time to volunteer and they're also helping through their organizations to disseminate information. Mm -hmm. Okay. What would you want to say to people uh, who are shy or who are embarrassed, who are uncertain 
uh, or who just want to deny it. Yeah. Deny yeah. that they have any memory concerns right. addition. Well, well, how would you? What would you want to say to them, or 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 do in them? Right. I would say that getting help is never a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And just come on down. And my goal with the programming that I'm doing, the Memory Cafe, is to create a community mm -hmm. so that we can support each other mm -hmm. in whatever we need. And there's never a bad reason to become part of a community. Okay. All right. Uh, um, what uh, what else should should would you want people l looking at in on our show? The, yes. The, 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 it's your show. It's everybody's show because the story matters. That's the theme we keep coming back to. The story matters, and we should hear each other's stories. We should. And uh, in that way, we we grow, and we in so many different ways. You know. Mm, it's true. So, uh, what, um, see, and I forgot what, <laughs> why I started that. <laughs> what would I so, say to them? Yeah, what would you say to them? I would say come to the library. There's mm -hmm. lots going on. The Memory Cafe is one avenue, and we have lots of different programs. It's a great place to find your community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, I, I, and, and it, People can can hear that it's personal. Yeah. And I, I have once, I have a personal part of that. Can oh. I share that? Of though? course. Okay. My, I have had four sisters, uh, and me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, three old, three no, three older and one younger, and. Um, we always we went through the depression. I was born in the middle of the depression. We went through the depression, the Second World War, and the fifties and the sixties and the seventies. You know, uh, and we all grew up in in that 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 kind of time. Um, three of my sisters now are, are are gone, not with us anymore. My one sister, Lucy, uh, about two years ago began to realize she was having trouble with memory issues mm, yeah. and her four kids were kind of evenly divided as to whether or not there was a serious issue or not a serious issue. Mm. And um, so uh, we, we, we thought about how, how, do, we, how do we connect? Um, the, the one th exercise we did uh, we took, um, the two of us were two years apart. Yep. And, and uh, we, we did a, a one page story every Friday on email nice. to the family. And, and as a way to have the kids understand mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah. the, this and maybe, maybe see if in fact they, they, she, they can connect with uh, um, and, and get a clear sense of whether they, w what's really happening for her. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, we, we, we've done that and, and eventually we could see that more and more the, there was less and less, you know, connecting. Mm. Uh, she used to sing a first line of a song and she would expect you to sing the second line. <laughs> and if you didn't know the second line, she'd teach it to you. Oh. And, you know, so, um, uh, just I, I, that's that draws me to 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 think about how important it is to connect it with is. people, it is. whether they wherever they are mm -hmm. and what they what they need. So I'm really excited to hear about what you're doing uh, yes. in, in this project. It is all about connecting and community. Yeah. So come on down and join us. Yeah. So, uh, are there other things that you'd like to share? Because we have a little bit more time. Yeah, um, I I think that I would just invite people to uh, share your thoughts and what you would like this memory cafe program to look at. You know, the the statistics on the number of people in our county that are afflicted with memory issues is pretty high. I can't remember the number right off the top of my head, but it's right. it's fairly shocking. So I know that there's a lot of people out there who could really benefit from this community. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I would love to hear from you and stop in and, and make this. A do you like happy the place. name Cafe? Yeah, good. I do. I, you I, do. I, you I, like it? Yeah. Well, I put bright day memory I am cafe a I am a coffee it. conversation person. Oh, there you go. From from way back. You know. Well, you can never go wrong with a good cup of coffee. No, you cannot. <laughs> and I've had some bad coffee mm. in my day too. Yeah, me too. Uh, I gave that up years ago yeah. though. So so the, I, and I think cafe is very friendly. I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a very friendly. And it is. And I yeah. will have coffee there. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be good, but it'll oh, be coffee. Oh, oh, I'll tell you. <laughs> 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 I, I think we've just about come to the end of this time, but it's delightful to be with you and to well, learn more. You. And we invite the people who have a chance to see us on MCTV uh, to, to come to the library, come be part of this be a part of this experience, and we thank Renee for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Len. It was a pleasure. Good.